Hello, and welcome to another episode of Rio's How To. Thanks for tuning in. My name's Simon Gorsworth, and today we're going to look at how to tie a dropper. Well, first, what is a dropper? And then why do you fish a dropper? Towards the end of the video, I'll show you the kind of the ways of tying droppers, but let's have a look at what droppers are. First of all, a dropper is a way of fishing more than one fly. All right, normally you tie on a single fly and you fish that. If you want to fish more than one fly, you need some kind of dropper. Check your rules first, your local fishing laws, because some fisheries only allow one fly, some allow two, some allow three. Back in England, when I was what's called lock style drifting, I used to fish five flies. Sounds crazy, but you know, you catch a lot more fish with those five flies and you get a lot more tangles, but there you go. I, I would rather have the higher percentage of catching fish than tangles. So really that's what droppers are, just ways of fishing more than one fly on your, on your rig. And uh, here's a couple of things I've set up that gives you an idea. This is my steelhead or Atlantic salmon rig. So for example, I've got here on my left hand side a big orange fly and on my right hand side a small black fly. I like to fish this rig for steelhead and salmon anywhere I go. I prefer the heavier fly on the point. The point is the term for the fly furthest away. And then the dropper is the arm that's hanging down in this case. I like the biggest fly on the point for a couple of reasons. One, when I cast, the heavy fly pitches and lands everything straight. Two, the heavier fly sinks a bit deeper, so I have a nice transition from my heavier fly to my floating line with the small fly slightly less depth. And three, if I get a fish, a steelhead that swirls at it and pulls it gently, or a salmon and doesn't take it, then all I do is I just take one step down river, and the next cast, the smaller fly goes over the fish, and they'll often come back to that smaller fly. So that's a great rig for steelhead and salmon fishing, requires a dropper. Another reason that I would fish a dropper is if you want to fish a really, really small nymph. Again, hard to see here, but let's take a look at, look at this. There's a tiny nymph on the end here on the point, and this fly, let's say the fish are feeding on midges, and you've got to fish a tiny size 24 nymph like this. Well, you're never going to get that to sink on its own. You could put sled shot on, or you can just put on a heavily weighted fly like this, and that heavy fly sinks, pulls the little fly down, and your little fly gets down to the depth of the fish, and you also have two flies. So you get two chances of catching a fish. So that's another why, reason to fish a dropper, heavy fly to take the little fly down. Another one is indecision. You're out fishing and you don't know whether to fish a brown fly or a white fly or a big fly or a little fly. Well, hey, guess what? Fish both. This is a great fall rig, good streamer rig in the fall for brown trout particularly. Uh, on the dropper, I have a slightly bigger fly that's brighter. And in this case, I've got a slightly smaller fly that's darker. I can have a bigger, darker fly and a smaller, lighter fly. It doesn't matter. It just gives you variety. You get a lot of fish fishing two flies like that. And then finally, on these little examples here, that's called the hopper dropper rig. And this is where you have a dry fly. In this case, I have a foam hopper. And the foam hopper sits up on the water like this. And the nymph hangs underneath it. And it floats down the river. And so the dry fly acts as a float and also as a strike indicator. The fish can grab the fly, bobs under, and you see your take from that because that disappears. So a couple of reasons that I like to fish dropper. Now let's take a look at how you make the dropper. And there's a number of different ways to make dropper depending on what you want as your end result. Probably the commonest and easiest way is quite simply the triple surge knot, where you join two bits of nylon together. And I've chosen different colors here because I want you to really be aware of a couple of things that are pretty important. I've got a blue stuff here on my left. I've got this yellow stuff on my right. So the situation is my rod is up here. I've got the leader attached to the fly line. The leader's coming down to where normally my single fly would be, right here on the point. And now I want to add a second fly. So I'm going to take an extra bit of monofill. In this case, it's colored, but you know, 4X, 3X, 5X, whatever you're going to be fishing. And the reason I've got two colors is I want you to be very aware that this is attached to my fly line and this isn't. So when I finish this knot, this is not going to be the one I want to tie my spare fly on. I want to tie my spare fly onto that. Very important you know that. And because you know that at this stage, I like to overlap about six to seven inches here. I slide my hand up and I just tie the triple surgeon as far up the leader as I possibly can. As I said, I'm not gonna run over the triple surgeon. We're just gonna do this. One, two, and three. Let it pull tight. And there you can see is our arm hanging down that I tie the fly onto. Chop this arm off tie your fly to this, or you chop that back to the length you want to fish it, and that is the triple surgeon way of adding a dropper. That's one way. In addition to that, there is the New Zealand dropper, very common, very popular. And this one 
is where you've got something like this. You've got your fly already tied on. This is great with these weighted nymphs that we talked about in one of the earlier ones about how the small nymph gets down by the heavy nymph. So let's say you've got your heavy nymph tied on here onto the end of your leader. Quite simply, you then take your 5X again or your 4X material and around the bend of the hook, fold it around the bend, I just tie this clinch knot or improve clinch, whatever you like to do. I'm just doing it quick here for the video. Get on, pull tight, lick it, snip off the tag. Again, if you don't know how to tie the improved clinch, check on the Rio website under the knot videos, you'll find out. And here is your extra arm and you can tie your second fly onto this at whatever length you want. Just be careful with this technique because if you're fishing a barbless fly, I've done this many times with a barbless fly and the action of casting, you'll find the knot will slide off and suddenly you're fishing only one fly. So there is a word of warning with the New Zealand dropper as this one is called. Another option is the tippet ring. Now the tippet ring, these are, the, we make these at Rio in a couple of different sizes. There's the large size here, which is a steelhead tippet ring. It's about three millimeters. And there's the trout size here that's two millimeters. And these are just wire rings that are very small and circular. And this is a really simple way, a very quick way of adding a dropper. And one of the greatest things about this is that should your dropper get short, it's very, very fast to lengthen it again. And you'll see why in a second. So what I've got here, is I've got my imaginary bit of leader again going to the rod and on the front end of it I've got a tippet ring and again quite simply I tie my improved clinch or my clinch knot here just do this nice and quick just do a few turns on that chop off the tag so the tippet ring is in between the leader kind of hanging down like so this goes to my point fly on the right my right and then my dropper simply is a third piece of my 5x 2x whatever tip it is that I thread through that tippet ring and again with a clinch knot or an improved clinch. Tie it on, cut off the tag and then as you can see here's my main leader, here's my main going to the point fly and then this piece hanging down you just trim it to length. I like to fish droppers about eight inches long. That's about a good length of dropper. It sticks out nicely and it doesn't spin around the leader too much. So that's a perfect dropper. And what you'll find is if you change your flies frequently as people do when they're fishing for whatever reason, or you lose your fly, this gets shorter and shorter. And because it gets to a point where you can't tie another fly on, you just simply snip this one off and add a new arm on. So a very clean, very efficient way. And that is using a tippet ring. And then the final way, I learned this in Poland many, many years ago, I was fishing in uh, some competition fishing. And in Poland, they were showing me these swiveling droppers, which are pretty dang cool. And the swiveling dropper stops your dropper tangling around the main stem. So what I've kind of done, I've pre-rigged it here. This is a regular imaginary leader. And in the end, I've tied that triple surgeon knot we just talked about. And this is a stop knot. It hasn't got any arms coming up. It's just a stop knot, a triple surgeon knot. You take the dropper material that you want and you just tie yourself a double overhand surgeon loop. Once again, if you don't know it, check out the real website. Look at the videos. Look at the knot videos and you'll see the double surgeon loop. You tie that on there, chop off the tag. And then when you're not, look at the section of the knot that goes up to your fly line and your rod, not the one that goes down here. And very simply, you just take your loop and you do a kind of a loop to loop join and you pull this right through and you pull your loop tight. Okay, what you get is this knot slides. It's called a sliding dropper. The stop knot stops it going anywhere. That locks it into place like that. And one of the good things about it, kind of hard to simulate here, but if that's tight, is this will swivel around. You don't get a lot of tangling. With a lot of droppers, the line hangs around like this and tangles because it just spins in the current and when you're fishing it. But this swivel dropper stops doing that. So that's quite simply just a regular double surgeon loop onto a triple surgeon. And again, you chop this to the six inches or seven inches, whatever length of dropper you want. And away you go. So really, again, I've done it in these yellow stuff just because it's visible and, it, and you can see it. Really, those are your best ways and why you fish droppers. I think droppers hugely increase your chance of catching fish. Absolutely no doubt about it. As I said right at the beginning, it does increase your chance of getting tangles. Accept that. Do check your lo local laws again. That make sure you're allowed to fish more than one fly, two or three flies. And just one final word of warning. Just be careful if you're netting a fish on the point fly and you're sliding your hand down to grab that 
that fly and unhook the fish because you could stab yourself. So there's a few things to worry about when you're fishing droppers, but overall you'll greatly increase your chances of catching a fish. I think you'll catch a lot more fish, you'll have a lot more fun. So do it. So hopefully you've learned a few things there. Again, thanks for watching this version of a how-to video. Today's how to tie a dropper on. Tune in again for some more episodes coming up on the Rio website. Thanks for watching. Thank you.